just to say we are kind of we were, we're recording tonight in various ways um i think i think marina you're ready to record and uh, you're ready to take on the mode and meaning group is that correct marina did you hear me i'm so sorry i it's sometimes a hit the thing in it yeah i was just i'm sorry i'm just getting my screen recorder cool, cool. Going. i just remembered okay that I would do that. okay that's what i was checking in on and um we, we should do brief introductions here i'm already recording by the way um and um paul hankins is going to present some work and we're going to as you know we're going to look at the multimodal composing um framework with that work um did it, did it, did it. Uh, I think we should get started. Um, let me see if I can get Chris and Troy to come back to, to the group. Hey guys, do you mind coming back and having introducing yourselves? Yeah. Let's quickly introduce ourselves. Go around the circle if we don't mind. If you don't mind. Um, we'll throw out like a digital web to another avatar. I should and bring it back into the circle. Oh. So. <laughs> Quick and dry. Liz, Liz, have you been here before into Kumus Yes, I have. Yeah, Liz, Liz and I do the District 30 work together, so she yeah. is more familiar than she wants to be. No, <laughs> I won't say that. I'm glad you could make it tonight. Um, welcome. Um, so I introduced Liz. Um, Liz and I do some work in Queens with um, elementary schools, and um, Liz, do you want to? Briefly introduce yourself as well. Um, no, but, but Paul introduced me to Nalcon on the Kumo stage last summer, actually. And um, we've been experimenting with it. Um, we struggle because our sessions generally have 50 or more people in them. So that's the challenge. <laughs> How do you make all this work with a large group? But we're, we're exploring. Great. Go ahead. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, I, I want to make these quick. Trevor, do you want to introduce yourself? Just say hello. Yeah, sure. I'm a, I'm a uh, English teacher in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, I co-authored a book last year, Learning the Transfers, Designing Curriculum for a Changing World, and do a lot of consulting work around that. Um, I'm also uh, working on my doctorate at the University of Illinois in their online program for learning design and leadership. So I'm studying multiliteracies. Um, came here tonight, joined the app. <clears throat> for the, the teacher studio at some point last year to have been using it intermittently and, and really excited to dive into stuff on multimodality. Um, I'm follow Paul on Twitter and Paul, you're in our, in our um, the group with Angela Stockman, right? Are you, are you doing, are participating in that? The oh, yeah, we're doing? Yes. Uh, here, awesome. here and there. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. a, she's a treasure. Yeah, definitely. So that, that is what brings me here. Cool. Excited Welcome. to check out Cuomo space too. Welcome. Hi, Chris. Hi, I am Chris Sloan. I teach high school English and media production and photography uh, at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, go Illini. My dad went to Illinois, so long-suffering <laughs> Illini fans. Cool. Troy, welcome. Hello, welcome. I'm Troy Hicks. I'm a professor of English and Education at Central Michigan University, where I also direct our Chippewa River Writing Project. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. I work for the National Writing Project, um, and I've been re recently teaching multimodal uh, composition, which put more, you know, fire under my butt around it all. Um, but I've been learning with you all about this work for many years, so happy to be here. Marina. Um, hi, I'm Marina, and I teach third graders in um, Westchester, New York. And um, I came like two weeks ago when we started to look at the article and um, annotate it and see the space. So um, I'm kind of excited to get back into it because... Paul and I were looking at it the other day and developing some work for some young, um, younger people who are well younger earlier into the profession. So I'm really excited to share that um, while also learning more for myself. Cool. And I'm Paul Allison, worked with the New York City Writing Project for many years. And um, th thank Christina for uh, pushing us into this 
wonderful thing that we're we're setting up here. Um, I, I think there will be a few other people join on us. Um, all we need to do the next step here is um, to have two people in each small group, <laughs> right? So you have at least a couple people to talk to. Um, there are three small groups. There is um, there is one for audience, one for mode and meaning, and one for originality. Uh, Marina is going to sit with somebody over there in the green chairs do a mode and meaning. Um, Chris Sloan is going to work on audience and I'm going to work on originality. The rest of you, if you can pick one, please do. <clears throat> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend way down at the bottom. There are post-its that lay this out and we're already way off time, but that's okay. <laughs> we're going um, we're going to spend uh, 10 minutes reading a section of the article that is about your particular domain, right? Not the whole article, just your, your section. Adding some comments and now comment on each table. If you click there, it'll take you to the, that section of now comment. And you can add some comments there for about 10 minutes. Try to get, you know, clear about what the uh, questions are. Up on the wall, you'll see the questions that the authors uh, have posted for each of these three sections, each of these three domains. Um, so you just want to kind of, kind of get clear on that. Then we'll come back and meet Paul Hankins, look at his work very, very briefly, and then go back to the small groups, try to think about the questions with Paul's work in mind, and then come back to the large group all together and have an interconnected conversation. Fair enough. And I'll yell at you and encourage you to come on back to the large group when we're ready. Any questions at this point? We're good. Okay. So I think you can assign yourself. Yes, or should I ask you to? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to come down here. <laughs> Everybody else went to other ones, so. Okay, no, we can we can work together. Let me is is it are there at least two in each group? I, sh I can check the map and see if that's true. Oh, there are four in that group. Chris Sloan and then Debbie. Let me see if I can get. Let me see if I can get one of those to come over. Um, and there's Sam. Maybe he could stay with us. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. Um, that has the article. Okay. It would, sorry to um, interrupt, would one of you be willing to go over and sit with Chris Sloan in, in the blue section? We would be better distributed if we could do that. Yeah, I'll go talk to Chris. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right, go ahead. Everything okay, Mar Marina? Yeah, I got, I got you. Okay. So sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, she was 98, lived a good life. But um, I was curious about today, so I'm kind of just hanging out. Hey, Paul, what's going on, man? Good, good. So we're recording, so I don't want to put you on the spot. But OK, next week, next week, we want to do your work here. So just yeah, keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> OK, that's, yeah, that's why I knew what this week wasn't good because, you know. Well, I know. No, OK, so yeah. So we're going to look at Paul Hankins, um, some work he's been doing. Um, and there are three domains, and you're in the originality domain, okay? Um, and what we would like you to do, if, it, if, if you don't mind me pushing us forward here, is, um, is down, down at the bottom there are um, post-its if you want to check out our general agenda idea here. But if you click on the, the poster on the table, you'll come to the now comment section that we'd like you to read and annotate for a little bit. So let's take five minutes to do that and see how it's feeling. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. It should come up in a different tab. You'll have to log in, of course. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to start at the mean of in practice originality, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, it should, that's where it should start. Yep. So, and you'll see there, I'll shut up so you can read. Um, 
There are 20 paragraphs, and there's no way you could read all of that, but, you know, kind of get started.
Okay, I just wanted to say that we're doing this messy thing where we're having a conversation and on now comment, and then so if you want to break out of your now comment and talk, feel free to. And I'm going to go up and check on other groups for a second. I don't even know if you can call it rejection because it's mm. it's part of the usage. It's part of the mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. so. so are you guys messing with the uh, now comment and conversation? And <laughs> yeah, we were kind of going at the looking at the comments and talking about the comments in our audience section. Cool, cool. We may have to come back and make comments. Yeah, <laughs> right. we, we you, you don't get a grade. It's okay. We were not the uh, right audience for the audience. <laughs> that's cool. As long as, you, as long as you're you're happy, um, we sh let's let's give this uh, four more minutes, okay? And then, okay. We'll, and then Paul, you'll yeah. introduce yourself. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you three. You don't know each other, but I. But how's how's it going? First of all, uh, so it's it's a kind of a messy thing where you're doing now comment and talking to each other i want to encourage you to pull out of now comment and actually talk to each other a little bit yeah verbally okay. and then right. yeah cool cool okay so we'll give you four more minutes to be experts on mode and meaning <laughs> that's a joke so of wait, course you want us to go back to now comment for four minutes no 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 talk to each other and, yeah, okay yeah okay Like, what do they say about that? They say, I mean that that new ideas are simply old ideas revived. Bam! That's just like since Aristotle's time philosophy was complicated. The idea that yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so Sam, the um, sorry, I don't know where you guys were in the conversation. The um, the way you remix um, the the move opera, right? The way you the way you did recently where they turned that that one song into a poem of their own yeah yeah uh, the, that would be a nice piece to look at the we shall not be moved piece yeah that was yeah. um yeah or like i mean a, a writing staple stamp us i mean uh staple or writing sample staple is like um with text rendering and walking taking a line from a you know taking a line and then recreating uh new new renditions of of, of concepts constructs from from poetry and the like mm -hmm. yeah my students just did a bunch of kind of my students who are teachers just did a bunch of, you know, found poetry. And it was really powerful for them to think about it as like remixed work that their students could also do. Like, but, you know, you could start with something and go from there, you know. But I, 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 I've been around art. Sorry to jump to this, but, um, so, I won't remember the author's name right now, but the idea that artificial intelligence and the, the kinds of texts that computers can produce for you being similar to automatic writing and therefore being similar to free writing, to what degree when we free write, are we just taking ideas that are in our head and putting them on paper, right? So are those our free ideas or are those ideas that, that you know, we've, gathered and consumed together right so did the new york times piece paul did that new york times piece inspire those uh, well <laughs> that that's one that's one of the ones that the, me, man. yeah but i am i am interested though in the way oh i said this before paul go ahead no 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 i so so just a, just a, um yeah so what what would be wrong with instead of doing a free write having your computer do the free write for you and then you look at that draft and think about, oh, I like that part of it. I don't like that part of it. You know, what's the difference? Is there, you know, we assume that free writing is this original thing, but it, you know, I'm not so sure it is. 
Because <laughs> it's all the stuff that, you know, have has come to us over the years. Right. I guess I, I feel like, though, with a computer, it's, I don't know what's bringing the content into its consciousness. I, I, sh I don't even know if I should say that, but into its. Yeah into its body of knowledge or body of content. And I feel like with, with humans, I just find it more interesting because I feel like we gain knowledge through our skin and through our, you know, like we gain knowledge through all our senses uh -huh. and computers are, you know. Yeah, we're probably off the topic here. <laughs> but but maybe certainly not, I found though. poetry a place for found to find things certainly and to gather things i guess mm -hmm. and if if next week for example we're going to look sam if we're going to look at your medium posts and that's what we're proposing to do are those mm -hmm. original are those written by you originally or did you borrow from other ideas or i mean it's 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 borrowed from it's inspired and what's the, you know, the thin line between inspiration and borrowed. Hey, Janet. Hey. Welcome. So right. we are, if you look at the post-its right above you, uh -huh. we are still doing number one, but you've, you've already gone in and done some annotating, I noticed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do number two in, in almost right now. So you want to come on up? Do you remember plus minus key zooms you in and out? Which? Okay. Yeah. Why don't you hang with Sam and Christina, and then uh, okay. and then we'll invite everybody up in a second. Hey, Janet. All right. That's true. And it's thinking more about like what are the choices that I can make to convey meaning with those modes, as opposed to what is this tool or strategy that I can use. If that makes sense. So go ahead, Paul. No, I was just going to invite you to come over to the whole group and we're going to meet Paul and then you'll come back to this group, with the same people, keep talking about this, but with Paul's work in mind. Okay. okay? Which is complex, but we'll manage it. <laughs> work with like the Solidarity Writers Program. Come in with these Hi guys, do you mind coming over to the large group now and Paul, we'll introduce your project and yourself for a little bit. Thanks anyway but come on up to the large group if you don't mind and page i made specifically <laughs> sam hey what's going on bro oh, oh <laughs> sam uh, uh, no i got nothing after that i guess i got sam now so uh, oh boy, mr hankins you are amazing stop it okay Welcome, welcome. Let me let me get the green group over here, and then Paul, you're going to take over. Um, if you want to start looking at Paul's work, you you can click on that um, that collage in the middle there. Um, collage. That's a that's yeah, that's a collage. Um, and and you'll go to his his work. There's way more than you can look at, but he'll introduce it to us. Hold on. A lot more with technology. Uh, I know we know Paul. We're coming. Okay, okay. I'm just dragging you over. The bit by bit series. Okay. Again, um, I'm going to just hand this over to Paul Hankins. And uh, the way you're going to look at the work that he's going to present. Oh, I, I should say this. We imagine that a similar process could be done with student work and with students, right? But we decided last week that we would experiment with our own stuff first, right? With adult work. Um, and so that's why... and. Um, the first two people we thought of was Paul Hankins uh, stuff that he's putting up on Instagram and then Sam Reed's medium posts. And so we're going to look at uh, if Sam approves of this. We hope to look at Sam's work next week and we're looking at, um, at Paul's work this week. So go ahead, Paul. Let's assume everybody has clicked on that and they're looking at it. And do you want to introduce? Go ahead. Sure. So there's you can you can look at material here that Paul's posted in Cuomo space, but we've also created a hashtag at Instagram, um, at least for the time being. Uh, the idea of this project was going to be very temporal. 
Um, we're doing it with students this spring. Uh, we're doing common, we call it a commonplace book because uh, the students may choose another way to do theirs. Uh, sometimes the needle tips over towards scrapbook and we're trying to get it from scrap to something a, a little bit more um, purposeful by way of collecting materials. So uh, this project, so I'm, I'm going to wear two hats and I guess the, the, the one hat I'm going to wear is artist and that gets a little bit tricky when you're in process and you're, you're still building something. And that trickiness was actually kind of revealed this week when Paul says, hey, you want to bring what you have and, uh, and and share with these folks. And also the idea, Chris and I were talking about this before Troy came over, the idea that this project really, the genesis of this project for me was trying to make a comment about uh, humans, you know, in the 1.0 modality, you know, wearing the skin suit, this dust jacket, you know, uh, what we can do that machines cannot intuitively do right now. And, and so my context collapsed when the author of digital writing for the National Writing Project is here. And I've got to like, okay, but it's still about pen and ink. You know, it's still about the artist here. So I'm, I'm wearing two hats. I'm wearing the artist hat and my intention and also an appreciation of what multimodal writing uh, can do and what it can look like. But my project right now is still very analog. So this idea, I would not have had this idea if I wasn't going through a Goodwill in February and I found a 1984 textbook on the history of computers. There really is it's just, that's, that's all it is. I mean, it takes us from like Pascal all the way to whatever we had in 1984, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And the imagery was so fantastic. Uh, just the, the, the early pieces and the early attempts at the at computing, but also, some commentary in there about the hymns we used to sing for the head of IBM. <laughs> you know, it was almost like these people were the gods of their time. They were creating machines. But then you wander through the book and you find original definitions of computers as being people who calculate. You know, and so we're starting to find the synthesis. But this is an example that's on the screen right now in Chromo Space. This is when Paul invited me to share. So I just quickly <laughs> mocked up this page, right? But, and it but says, Paul, it's, Paul I just want to, yeah. I just want to clarify if, you, if when they click on that, they go to your hashtag. Oh, go, oh, great. Yeah, oh, so even better. Okay. I but, think that's what, uh, what people are looking at. Yeah, it takes at. us to the hashtag. So we're oh, seeing, nice. we're seeing everything. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So if you see something, you want me to speak to it. Uh, I'd love to do that, but the, this, uh, the, the, the one that I see uh, has a picture of a, a frame and it says a poet's rendering of the work to date. <laughs> it's definitely not finished, you know, but in the textbook, what we find is we find these hymns that they, uh, that they sang to the founder of IBM. Uh, there's pieces of dialogue, there's pieces of correspondence. So even in a textbook on the history of computers, we see multi-genre, we see multimodality. Well, what I'm doing is uh, a, a little bit dangerous here. Obviously, we're doing some blackout. Uh, and whenever you start doing blackout poetry, people will like throw up the name Austin Cleon. And, and that's great. And I, you know, I'm, I'm flattered and I love that people make that connection. And he's certainly codified, but he's not the originator of the Cento, right? Uh, the Cento is a found poem. And uh, blackout goes, I mean, it goes back to the medieval ages. But I mean, for me, I found blackout poetry uh, and, and Randy, Randall Johnson, you know, in the 70s. Uh, he has a great blackout book of Paradise Lost. But if you can imagine, he's blacked out Paradise Lost to leave the letters R-A-D-I-O-S, radios. And he makes a comment at that time using the, using the text of Paradise Lost to make a comment on the influx and the influence of radio in the late sixties and mid seventies, you know, so it's a super cool comment. Some of the pages make absolutely no sense, but in context, they, they make sense because the, the pages that don't quite work for Johnson actually become some of the static of the radio frequency of that time. So I have some pages in bit by bit that really don't make sense because they're not linear and they're not paginated. They just, I, I make a page and I put it in the book. And sometimes, you know, the facing pages make sense. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes I wanted to try 
a little bit of poetry. I, I'm still weaving back and forth. Uh, this project actually originated with students reading Maggie Smith's book, Keep Moving. So I, I wanted to do that with seniors this spring. I wanted them to have that message. So you'll see sometimes in the text where I'm not only extracting from bit by bit the computer textbook, but I'm using Maggie Smith's ideas from Keep Moving to even generate material through that through that weave. And when I'm doing the blackout, sometimes you'll see me take a highlighter and kind of move through and it's like, okay, the, the blackout is fine, but if I could extract it even more and just do the highlighted material, like on this one particular page, he fleshed out instinct, heart, the matter overall, right? Managed to finish a small prototype, a crude device. It was only a test, right? It was only a test, right? And all that came out of the computer textbook for me to make a comment about, okay, Paul's inviting me to do this and I'll come out here in good faith and I'll share, I'll put on the artist hat and be a little bit vulnerable, but also tell you, this kind of elongated work, right? The serial work over a period of time allows you to dive in and out of composition in a way that uh, an essay, uh, 12 font times New Roman, single staple in the upper left-hand corner will never allow. We'll never allow the student to go back. Like we have a, a section in our project called the breakthrough moment. That that piece, that little one pager can come in any time up to the due date of the project. And th th it's only a due date because we won't be able to do things together anymore after the seniors graduate. Good writing is never done. It's only due. Well, can <laughs> so, I ask a question about the composition that I'm looking at? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell me what you're looking at. Um, so I clicked on the uh, the one that has the bit by bit cover, I think. Um, and it has mm likes it's the second image that's coming up the and second one can, in the hashtag yeah yep. the second one in the hashtag and then i can scroll through it page by page and and, and paul i think it i think ever i think it makes sense to use that one um we could swim all over the place but using that one would be a good thing to do i think is that fair okay. paul yeah okay go ahead christine Sorry. so what i was interested in is sort of what um uh little bit on how it's made did you um cut up a book and then put it back together did are you do you have a composition book that you're pasting it in are you are you using the original text and then bringing other things into that and make, so i was just very curious like if i was to look at this thing is it it looks like it's attached at the binding like it's a book kind of thing. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have them. I think there's an image of them actually sitting side by side. It's a composition book. Okay, it is. And, composition. and what's happening is we are decimating the textbook. Right, got it. Uh, and then, yeah. the, and so, then bringing the composition, the, the elements into the composition book and, and putting it together there. Okay, right. that's right. Thank you. And so for, for every created page, the facing page is probably still the like the lined paper of the composition book that allows me to come in and do reflections. So that was like a purposeful design oh, piece. Oh, that's interesting. It, so that's so that's ongoing. Um, and, and sometimes the facing pages will be like I like the image and it kind of informed a poem on the facing page. So facing pages are usually like trying to work together, but there's blank pages in between that allow me to come back and say something more about that piece or. Um, do some quick writes with my students. Why don't we keep doing those sort of clarifying questions? Yeah, yeah. Can I, so, uh, yeah, I had a, I wanted to hop in with uh, a question and an observation. Um, my question is like, how in this process, how much of this is like contemplative work, like mindfulness work, like how I, I feel like like this work is like. I don't know. I've, I've, I feel some resonance around like this mindful, like just being in the moment kind of thing. And is that intentional or does that just happen? And uh, I, I love for you to speak. I, I mean, I love I really love this quote where you said, um, I'll create two morning pages. And this one, I come back to the ideal. If we want our students to be a part of the process, we the teachers cannot be apart from process like, yo, bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not only working along, but they're all in Washington, D.C. this week. I'm still making pages, right? 
there's intention and purpose here because I know the time that I've set for myself on the project is to be finished with this when they finish theirs. That I'm already I'm already looking to the next composition book. I'm looking to the next process. But there's enough content in here now where I feel like I'll stop creating blackouts and things like that and go back and try to like salvage kind of like an excavation uh, project of so I think I knew what I wanted to say. Now the assessment is, did I say it? Um, and and what is it? And of what use is it to other people beyond the visual aspect? And I think that's an important consideration for multimodal composition is where is that needle? Is it toward the composition piece? Is it toward the creation piece? And that's why the framework of audience, mode and meaning and originality for me gives me a nice little triangle, a pen, if you will, that I can sit within, that that I can always be assessing back and forth. I, I'd love to talk about the project, but I know like in order for this to be utilitarian for you is how it works when a student does the same thing and brings this to you. And and I take off the artist hat and become teacher student again. I, it's It's okay to just be the artist tonight. I, I give them oh, time frame. I think that's oh good, good. because Let's because just, I'm absolutely in I'm absolutely in love with this project because what Sam good, just touched good, upon good. is I will I will take a page and I, and I'll I'll just scan it I'll just quick scan it with my eyes real quick and I'll see like little choppy phrases and then it's not very much thought after that Sam sometimes I will black out something with a sharpie and it's like boy I wish I had that back but you don't you don't because you're moving right and you're moving and you're creating it's kind of like you know like a painter uh that that piece of canvas is never white again you, you stroked it i stroked it right so we keep moving and, and try to get some kind of comment out of there and sometimes the comment is nice and linear and it looks great you know we think about austin cleon and he's able to black out like you know 98.8 percent .8 of a piece of text and come up with some really pithy kind of thing and i i'm, I'm just rambling through to show you that in the context, you know, so maybe uh, Chris, this is it. We're flattening, you know, not only flattening the audience, but we're flattening the text. <laughs> I'm taking out the stuff that's of no use to me. And I'm finding the stuff that's useful to me, and it shouldn't be, right? <laughs> it, 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 so I'm using source material, and it shouldn't be helpful, but it, it totally is. And I've done this with refrigerator manuals. Uh, I, I've done this with. Uh, uh, architectural digest. I mean, I've, I've, I've done this kind of work before, but never in the way that we're doing it with a book about computers and technology and how that works. So, so yeah, can you keep saying uh, something about audience? Like when we read that part of the um, now comment and we talked about those things, how do you, how do you think about audience and those ideas with this project? You know, my invented audience would be a, a teacher who's still questioning, and I don't even know that we question this enough, like, is writing what makes us distinctly human? I mean, I'm the only one who can write like I, like I do in a personal sense. In a technical sense, I can follow all the rules. But the things that get in the way of the rules are my own experiences, my own literary experiences, my own personal experiences, my, my spiritual experiences, all those things. And so that's what makes the writing unique and distinct to me. And I can, I can play by the rules, but I also need some room to, to stretch and to, to push back a little bit and to call from what I'm reading and taking in by way of text and give it back to you in the way that makes sense to me. If that's a four by four poem, if that's a blackout poem, if that's, I hope, I don't know if you can see the page where I came up with an idea of taking a, a six word, um, a six word haiku, right? So we're going to do the 17 syllables, but I'm only going to use six words. Then we're going to take those six words and stretch it out into a sestina. And if you've never written a sestina before, boy, that'll, that'll twist you inside out, right? So then you take the sestina and you inform it to come back to haiku, the same six words, but now they're rearranged because the Sistina showed you something different, so right? I, if are, writing are is what makes us, yeah, go ahead. No, it's just actually, I, I think you're talking about mode and, mode and meaning now, right? When you're talking yeah, about so we're Sistina. Actually, yeah, we're, we're, you know, if it's mode and meaning, then the form 
kind of directs the meaning or if nothing else, it sometimes limits the possibility of meaning. I mean, nothing more limited than the five, the, the five PE. So, uh, right. I, the, the, I, what I'm going to do right now feels totally ar arbitrary, but I want to try it if you don't mind. Uh, I want to try to go back to our small groups and have the, have the conversations about Paul's work in those small groups and then come back to this large group. Could we try that and see how it feels? <laughs> Could I, could I ask it? Paul one Where's... question before? Sure, we yeah, that? absolutely. Go for it. So, Paul, if you're give, giving this to your students, could you give me a sample of what, if this were your assignment, what would you be telling them? What guidelines? What are, what do they think they're supposed to be doing? You know, sometimes students are driven by how much, how many. So we'll actually have like some requirements for like what we would feel would be substantial. So uh, we actually have like a weekly spot check where they talk about, actually, they talk about uh, breakthroughs. They talk about the work that they've done. I uh, talk about um, if they don't have a big question that's driving their project in the very beginning, each week spot check actually asks, you know, is there a question that's starting to raise its hand very quietly in the corner of the room? <laughs> you know, when, when will we identify what that big question is that you're trying to answer? So uh, in that way, we move away from scrapbook into something a little bit more intentional. But oftentimes we start with like a read aloud of Maggie Smith's Keep Moving and maybe something in there. You so, know, oh, her oh, book is set up in like really. They're building their own scrapbooks. Is that right? Yes. Okay. They're yes. doing anything, whatever they want to do, whatever comes to their mind, whatever connections they make, given the text you've given them. I'm not, I'm not understanding. No, I think yeah, he's doing any text he's they doing want. His own, Liz, I think he's doing his, what I understand is Paul's doing his own work. And then that right. work is is offered as possibly a mentor text or possibly an inspiration for his students. To do whatever they want, whatever their passion leads or their curiosity leads them to. Well, that's really it. It's radical. Okay. That's so, what I'm, yeah. Okay. I, we, we will have time, hopefully, to okay. look at some of the Sorry. same work at, at, at another time. Let's, let's stay. Yeah. I went to Absolutely audience not. last time. So, so please fly back to the small groups and um, same, and talk same there. Group group. Oh, oh, Paul, Paul Hankins, Paul, you, Paul Hankins, you, you need to go. float, if you don't mind, from group to group and try to answer people's questions. Cool, cool. So I'm not sure originality came up much, did it or did it? I guess it did. But... Well, yeah. I mean, there's inspired for me there's like this question about like he's inspired by this idea of scrapbooks right mm. like there's some there's some influence there he didn't really talk about other and then these poetic forms right right he's playing with um but i mean, I mean he's, he's he's definitely um Going referring back to the text, he's definitely taking like this old textbook and re repurposing, remixing it. Right? it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, almost obviously. Yeah. And so yeah. To, back to the uh, back to the, our, our quote of like taking uh, you know simple old ideals and reviving them. Like he's literally he's literally reviving uh, the com this computer. This tech, this this technology, yeah, paper textbook, yeah. yeah, which is which is interesting. It's it's, it's kind of meta too, right? Yeah, it is very meta. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, the, and well, I, so Christina, you asked, and I don't know if we're, this is an originality question, but. You asked him what it looked like on the paper, but I don't want to forget that he also is very conscious about, I don't know if he's conscious. Sharing <laughs> he, it he, online? Yeah, he, he puts it on Instagram, and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to hear him talk about why he does that. And, you know, I guess that's an audience question, but I think it's beyond audience maybe too. Um, but I, yeah. So is he producing the the physical stuff to become a, a a digital product, or is that digital stuff just recording his 
process. So that mm -hmm. underscore is like Sam's meta thing. Mm -hmm. In what way? What do you mean? Well, it's a oh, computer because, textbook. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. And it's a paper. It's a it's a paper book about computers. He's making these paper artifacts, and he's then sharing digitally. Right. So, what's the final product? <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter, but uh -huh. it it it's genre bending. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is like a a computer uh, shared via computer product. It, it's interesting to me how much time it takes to take these things in. Like you really that's have what, to. That's why I was asking my question around. Like, man, I could. This could be like a really just cool, mindful practice of like just being yeah. present and just being. And I don't. Yeah, it clearly. I don't know how much time they spend on this in class, but it sounds like it's it's something that they just do. Um, yeah, that's the question. How much time? Do they spend on this in class and like what 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 feeling does it gen what what feeling how, what does it emote for them like does it relax them do they you know that kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. let's see if they'll come talk to us maybe uh, i'll be back project as it comes together as it's uh like uh an amalgam you know i think that comes out of the article this idea of amalgam and it's a lot of that work. And so when I think about the audience for this, I think it's broader than what he intends. You know, I just, he always pushes my thinking when I was, when I was looking at this. And I think for myself and working with the young teachers that I'm working with right now, and I think about audience and, and what kind of rubric I want to use, they don't have a sense of audience. They're very um, assignment driven right now. We are doing an assignment for school mm -hmm. and we have not addressed audience so i was fascinated with this and why i jumped in and started reading because i'm like oh my gosh i need to start with baby steps you know actually maybe even put on shoes before we walk but i think it's so important and i'm not sure paul realizes his power of the audience you know that's kind of my thinking on it what you're thinking I kind of am intrigued, I think, from a disparate piece of text that should not be availing to me what I want it to do. So that, I don't know if that's even confirmation bias. It's like, the, yep, the book said it, so it must be true. When I, it's not true because the book said it. It's true because it was said in the book and I found it. We illuminated it. How much we take into our assessment practices, what it feels like for the writer themselves to do the comp to create the thing. So, yeah, and that's I, I, I guess that's around like, like I mean, because this SEL is a big, big aspect yeah. of learning now. But like, how are we how are we assessing SEL um, and its impact on uh, work that we're having students do? Yeah. All right, I um, I'm gonna call time here and <laughs> let people know. And um, what what I'd love for us to do is ask Paul not to talk um, when we get back in the large group, and us <laughs> just give him feedback on what we saw. Oh, real so, quick, real, real yeah. quick, Paul. Um, sure. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you uh, some slides that because I, I I went and shared my work at um, with some grad students the work. Uh, from the medium blogging and the black wall street uh, oh yeah at, um at penn so I'll, I'll share i'll share those slides with you for some context cool cool okay that's great great thanks can mean okay so so we're gonna call time again in the small group <laughs> sorry um and and we're gonna ask paul to just listen to us when we come back to the large group okay Wait, what what am I doing? We're gonna come back to the large group and then yeah, but what am I doing? You're just gonna listen. Mm -hmm. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on over. We're we're good. You know, the physical is more important than digital. I'm hearing that from my staff a lot. 
you know, trying to try things on that are less digital because they feel like they were in this digital space for so long. Let me drag you all uh, into the into the integrated group again. Um, we're going to ask Paul just, okay, everyone's here now. Um, I, I think we're, for time's sake, we're just going to, I, we can, I, I trust you. You just speak out when you're ready to talk. Um, Paul's going to just listen to us though. Um, and we're just going to give him feedback. Let's start with audience, if you don't mind. Um, you don't have to summarize the comments, but what, where, what are you thinking about audience? The audience group report first, if you don't mind. And it's not a report, but it's just what's your thinking? <laughs> about Paul Hankins' audience? Yes. Well, I guess I was personally drawn to the idea of the commonplace as a genre, you know, which has been around for so long. And it made me think about, you know, the unintended audience for a commonplace, which I always think of as a really personal thing. You know, I collect snippets and I put it in this, I, and I do that. Uh, but I always think, I, t I tend to think of that as like, oh, I want to remember that thing. Like that was really well said. And so I tend to think of me as the audience, but I do realize there is an unintended audience of someone who might come across it and look at it. So I think with Paul Hankins, there must be a similar kind of, Obviously, because you're putting on an Instagram, there's, it's more than a commonplace, right? You're, you're communicating things about education. That's kind of what's going through my mind with audience. Troy, may I call on you? Sorry, Thanks. I was trying to unmute myself. Yeah, um, so cool. No, I was just, I really appreciate um, that Paul brings a literary sensibility to a nonfiction text and then takes this physical approach to it and takes, you know, nonfiction prose and turns it into haiku and blackout poetry and six word stories and things like that. And then also is there, we didn't get to talk about all the visual imagery and modality that was going on there. And like, there's the one with the four scientists with their heads in the shape of the clock had been superimposed over them. I mean, that one struck me. So there, there's just a number of things that I think Paul's done with this text. And it just reminds me that, yeah, these tools are all great, but sometimes like using our digits, <laughs> that's the most important part of uh, the digital. Okay, okay. One thought I had on audience that I haven't been able to say is, is, um, is to the degree that, that these, that, Paul, you are creating something that's a mentor text for your students. In a, in a funny way, they're an audience too, right? Um, so, yeah. Janet, did you want to add anything? I, just I always, to... I've pushed Paul for years to have a broader audience. Like I, there's nothing making my heart happier right now than to see him putting this work out on Instagram and someday his coffee table book will be done. Um, but I think when I think about audience for you, Paul, in this in this particular case, I think it's you're the primary audience as you are hmm. coming up with the deepest, you know, your deep thought process. But the learning for your students, I want to talk much more about because I think it's it's that whole idea of process. And I and I'm seeing elements of um, your picture book book work, which I don't know if everyone has seen his his work when he does a picture book. I was sharing that, and he liter he doesn't ever make a copy of the page so he has you know you have photos on both sides right so it's all the decision making that he does to create this amazing um, collage of a book right and and i've loved watching your process and and through covid you were doing some other processes through poetry and thing and building blocks and when i look at this piece paul i see that in a flat level right i see this i see these the like the picture that you're on right now and I love seeing your little self over this. And those look like the blocks that you physically move around. And so for me, the audience, I'm using a lot of past things for it as well. So Marina, Trevor, and Liz, some comments about meaning and mode. Trevor. Yeah, so, so I'll jump in. Um, Great. One of the things that we talked about that I think has already been discussed a little bit is, um, you know, a lot of times when one hears multimodality, they, they're pulling to mind you know, digital technologies. Um, I know personally, like my, all, most of my multimodal composition is like in that realm and most of my students are as well. And I really appreciate call, uh, 
Paul sort of inviting students to step back into the affordances of sort of tactile composition, um, you know, materials. Um, what are the affordances of that physical kind of nature of composition that is lost in sort of like the, the screen-based ways of multimodal um, composition? Um, and then what new layers of meaning can come out from that? Um, and I think you talked a few times about like the permanence of some of your decisions. You know, there's no control Z um, once you've, you know, blacked out a page. And I think that that is um, kind of beautiful, especially thinking about, you know, my, my current crop of students are, are very oriented towards perfection and, you know, undoing mistakes and, and wanting to please. And there's just something kind of beautiful about the messiness of his process um, that is a product of the modes that he's using that are more permanent, that are more tactile, and that require a lot more kind of skill and precision to, to hone. Um, so that was kind of my takeaway from it. Cool. Thanks. Liz and Marina, anything to add? Let me say that louder. Liz or Marina, anything to add? Well, I was just, it's I, okay I, and I like the hands-on stuff. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the hands-on stuff too. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. Paul came over to our small group right after we all um, spoke together in the whole group. And he was sharing just um, a little bit more about the composition decisions that he has to make and, and that, um, you know, it has to fit into the book and then making this about the composition book and then it has to so there's decisions that have to be made and sometimes a picture may um not make that page or just the decisions that go along with that the um hmm. so yeah i think uh getting to know the tools you're working with and the resources you have um and then making those decisions helps you build the meaning by the way that you place them together um, that was like really an cool. interesting way to think about like um, taking pieces and combining them. Well said. I saw this as a way of really personalizing learning for students and helping them to make connections to things they've seen or heard or things they feel and, um, and also to really get in touch with their own thinking and their metacognition and to think about the process and why they made decisions. I think it could all be a very powerful tool. Cool. And ori originality, I just want, I know. I'm wondering if Sam there. could follow up on that yeah. comment. Sam, go ahead. Originality. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we well, we, 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 the originality of this work is leading us to think about like taking old things making them new but specifically we, we even talked about like is the newness around like the the social emotional aspect of this work like what is it like for the students or even yourself as you're doing this and that's why I was I, I felt that real resonance around like wow the the mindfulness and just like being present and that that experience um was really struck me and I, I'm not really articulating it well right now, but cause my brain is kind of fried. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Christine, anything to add or yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was really interesting. Um, this like, how does it feel to the writer came up in our conversation, you know, not just the audience, um, but the, the writer themselves. Um, and then in terms of originality, we were talking about some of the, you know, he Paul kept talking about like a scrapbook, but beyond a scrapbook, How, you know, so there's sort of a vision he seems to have about, you know, that's that's inspired by the idea of a scrapbook, but then is sort of even more than that. It made me re remind me of John Cage's work um, and also because he's playing with poetic form and he's playing with with, you know, paper and and layers. Um, we called it a collage. So there's, there's definitely, but then I thought it was really funny. Someone said, well, clearly he's remixing an old textbook that's about computers. He's making a paper composition out of it. And then he's sharing that online. So, oh, met, uh, Sam said this, that it's, so it's very meta. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> See the circle well, around? That's the thing. Yeah, the circle, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm gonna, so here's, this was an assessment process, right? 
Did we assess Paul's work? How do you feel, Paul? Did we assess your work? <laughs> well, in the I, article, I, yeah. they argue assessment is to help grow writers, right? So if I just want to make sure we're taking that. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're asking. That is what I'm asking, yeah. Sit beside me. I say to sit beside me. I, I think one of, one of the things that this is kind of challenging me to consider because we're thinking about assessment is a, a lot of the assessment tack that I've been taking is based on like audience. So I've been having students like explain the rationale behind why they made a design choice based on their selected audience. Um, because I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm, like I said, I'm going to take like a very like digital orientation. And this is kind of pushing me to also consider why it's important to leave space for students to create for themselves, not for like, you know, I'm saying like rhetorical purpose, but I could see, you know, one could make the argument that if you're only looking at creating for an audience, it, it can become like this sort of like instrumentalized process and you're not creating for like the sake of creation. Um, so when it comes to assessment, that's, that's kind of challenging me to think not just having students explain rhetorically why they'd make a choice based on their audience and then assessing them on that, but then also maybe giving them an opportunity to reflect for themselves why it was to Sam's point, like a, maybe like a therapeutic, you know, time a, a contemplative process that they get to kind of go through and how it helped them or healed them in some way so i appreciate that all right we are trying to create a process here that is manageable that you, we can look at one piece of work actually look at the three different things and do it in an hour we got close here i don't know how it feels um we any kind of Final thoughts, debriefing thoughts about the process that anybody wants to add. Next week, we're going to do it again. Word, and we're going to do it with some of Sam's work. But so, any. Paul, I was thinking that could Paul Hankins have the last word? Like yes, that, that would that be. Kind of process? That would be great. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> that starts tonight. We're establishing that process. I love yes, that. go ahead. You have the last word, Paul. <laughs> Okay, so in the places where I'm being a little bit more irreverent, now I've only seen this word in print. I've never used it. The, that, the idea of paradoia, right? Did I get that right? The, seeing, seeing your face in the inhuman object, you know, the, <laughs> people look at car bumpers and they see faces. You know, they they look at their bathtub drain and they see faces. You know, and you're you're looking into the technology. You're looking into uh, the comment on the history of computers and uh, maybe initially you're trying to reject that and pull the 1.0 out. But then I think somebody made the comment about the recursive act of taking a computer textbook, ripping it apart, bringing it back, remixing it, and then throwing it back onto a computer, you know, or a, a device of some sort. So there's a kind of a, a, a symbiosis here. So I wanted to if I have the last word, I'm, I'll make it quick. I promise. It's it's late. It's late for me too. Um, this was an early, like maybe, maybe this is when I felt one way. You know, the machine cannot breathe with intention to whistle, to hum, to blow out a candle at the end of the day. To draw a breath is to sketch what it means to be human. The two-step, inhale, exhale. In order to keep moving, one must remember to breathe. Breath in all of its forms is the body's intentional will to live, to carry a life forward. Scream, laugh, sigh, sing, whisper, I'm here. Feel how the H becomes exhale. The machine does not know it is humming, let alone the music that caused it to pause, to return, to remember. So that was me like maybe early on going like, okay, wait, I, I do what I do. We do what we do. And it's uniquely human, and it's in, and it's important. And there's something called standards, and there's also something called the standard of care when you're caring for another human being. That standard of care is only enough to keep another person functional. <laughs> you know, it's the ABCs, it's the airway, the breathing, the circulation. But it's not about compassion. It's not about empathy. It's not about reaching out. It's not about making connections. And, and that's why I make the comment: the computer doesn't even know that it's humming. It's just doing its work, let alone it doesn't know the music that caused it to pause and say, I need to make a, a, a verbal response of my own, which is what we do when we hum, which is just a very intentional kind of breathing, right? But 
now I want to go back to our earlier piece, and this is and this would be it, I promise. Um, because that that was me like separating myself from the okay, I, I'm important in the computer. I, I can do this without the computer, but I can't do what I'm doing right now with you folks without a computer. And then the artifact that I brought, you know, so input, output, platforms, people, place, <laughs> flattening. Here, here we are. <laughs> so uh, this is a piece that was early on in the project, but it makes better sense to me now as we wed artist, educator, appreciator of the assessment. Oh, machine, how extraordinary, quite interesting. When first invented, an expression of imagination itself, a richer, stronger collective, an essayist's essence, an embodied biography, a people, the invention is themselves, re, cursive. The idea is the ancient great idea of intellectual origin. The invention evolved in poetic forms, the rules, the modes, the mechanical tabulations, calculating machines. The invention of achievement was not personal. The magnificent promise inherent fulfilled. We reach a new stage, another great idea. It's fitting we pause, return, reflect, revisit, Revise, reiterate, oh, oh, our minds, our computer recursive. Uh, every time I think about putting a mark on the page, I think about whatever technology brought me text in the first place. I was in a panel earlier today with some uh, pre-service educators out of Notre Dame, and they asked the question about when you learn how to read. I do not know when I learned how to read or when that act took place, when that took hold for me. But I know that it happened in text and I know that it happened in the interaction of text. And maybe that was the first movement toward cutting them apart, putting them back together, trying to see how it really works when I don't take for granted that just because somebody put it on the page that it's sacred. But it's it's sacred for the idea that's been conveyed to me. Now, what do I do with it? And I bring it back to you, right? So that's artist hat. That's not very helpful for, <laughs> for thank, you, thank you, thank you for being an artist, and and thank, thank you, you, thank you, everybody here for you know bracketing for a moment the the teachingness of of all of all of our lives and allowing us to be an artist here tonight. Thank you all. Um, we will be putting this up as a recording of some sort. Um, and uh, we're again, we're going to be doing this next week with some of Sam's work that he publishes on Medium. And uh, we're going to keep going. If you have any ideas for how we can think about this process, you know, email me. Be glad to think about it. If you don't know this already, um, this room remains here and you can come back anytime you'd like and use another piece of work um, and uh, help us think through this whole process. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, both Pauls. Thanks, Paul, for organizing. Sorry, see you.